a ride transport of harmful microbes via microplastics in Lake Superior. So Erica, are you giving the, the talk? I am, but yeah, Nimesh and Aaron are of, online also, so people right. can ask. I'll let, you, I'll let you introduce them. Okay, thanks. So hi, I'm Erica Majumder. Uh, you heard me ask a couple of questions earlier, but today I'm uh, representing a research project that's a collaboration between uh, my lab. Um, I'm at the University of Wisconsin-Madison in the Department of Bacteriology, uh, and Nimesh Pajara, who's uh, in also at UW-Madison, and he's in Civil and Environmental Engineering, along with um, your very own Aaron Burkhart, who uh, is helping us with some of the um, outreach as part of this project. And so we recently uh, received a seed grant uh, to develop some methods this year and then next year do a longer term um, sampling to understand if there are any interactions and then what those interactions might be between microplastic uh, contaminants and uh, harmful microbes that are um, in Lake Superior or uh, nearby Lake Superior. Uh, waters. And so uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to present to this group today. Erin may have sent some of you some feeler emails um, a little bit ago, uh, but we're actually looking for some partners who might be uh, willing to help us with the uh, field sampling aspect. We really do a lot of the laboratory research, um, but it would be wonderful for us to have the opportunity to um, leverage some of the great field work um, you all are doing uh, to get at some of these um, questions, and then we can study them um, in a little more detail in our laboratory. So I, uh, next slide, please. Um, so I, I might have already said a little bit of this, uh, but yeah, we, the seed grant we have is called the Wisconsin IDEA Collaboration Grant, and the purpose of it is uh, to um, explore things that are issues for the state of Wisconsin. And so we would like to, uh, throughout this process, um, answer uh, three questions. We've already seen that microplastics are occurring um, in Lake Superior and um, on its beaches and in its tributaries. Uh, and, you know, that's great work that's been done um, by uh, Lorena Rios Mendoza, who's at um, UW Superior, and she's also participating in this project, um, and along with uh, Nimesh, who's part of this project as well. Um, and thanks to the work that many of you who are on this call uh, do, we also know about the, you know, occurrence of harmful algal blooms uh, in Lake Superior. And so looking at these, uh, we are wondering uh, if pathogens, specifically harmful algal blooms, but potentially other um, human-related pathogens like E. coli are colonizing plastics in the Lake Superior near shore. We also would like to answer uh, if there is a dependence of the colonization or the growth of the microbes um, on the plastics, and if that has any variation on depth, mostly related to sunlight and nutrient availability. And uh, we're also curious if the microbial colonization, colonization of microplastics is uh, altering the buoyancy or the fate and transport um, of these particles. And as part of this project, we're also planning to develop exhibits for the Great Lakes Visitor Center. Um, next slide, please. So typically, harmful uh, microplastics are collected uh, and sometimes have uh, using the Montetrol nets, which are um, on the right side of your screen. And um, these are great. You can sample a lot of water with them and they do uh, collect things um, well, but it's difficult to obtain depth resolved measurements uh, from these or to have um, a better understanding of the sizes of the particles. And so one of the graduate students in my lab, Fouad Jatara, recently developed this new sampling device uh, that uh, can take pumped in water um, and filter it to collect both um, hab causing species and uh, microplastics, and then we can analyze them. And so we'd like to test 
um, if this device will work well in uh, lake environments. We've already um, installed it in a dam over the St. Lawrence River and it's been working well there. Um, next slide. And so once we've collected uh, the uh, particulate samples, uh, we don't know if they're microplastics till we investigate them more, but the particulate samples along with um, any of the microbial matter, uh, we have several different experiments planned in the laboratory where we'll look at that community membership, how microplastics are changing the growth and toxin production of these microbes. Um, and then in Nimesh's lab, he's an expert on particle transport, settling velocities, buoyancy, uh, all of these things. And he has settling tanks and all kinds of great stuff set up in his laboratory. So we'd like to see how the microbial uh, colonization is uh, changing these experiments as well. Uh, next slide. And so, yeah, that brings us to our ask. I wasn't sure how I was doing on time, uh, but we would really appreciate having um, a partner who's willing to work with us this summer and uh, next summer. But for this summer, we'd really like to establish our methods. We wanna test our device and see if it works in a lake environment. And we also need to figure out where uh, plastics and harmful algal blooms may be co-occurring uh, in the Lake Superior environment, which is why I was asking about some of the questions um, earlier. And it sounds like a lot of the data that you all have been collecting could be great clues um, for that because microplastics usually also come from runoff situations. Um, so yeah, and uh, I don't wanna take up too much time, but we, yeah, we would love to um, have uh, come for a ride along or um, send you one of our devices uh, or anything like that. Um, and, you know, we do have, uh, we, you know, we're able to come up or send our students to come up to work with you all. And so, yeah, if anyone's interested, uh, we're happy to talk about that in the discussion uh, section or in the questions later. And sorry for going too long. No problem, Erica. Um...